All right. How about let's start with the Bills pass rush here. Uh, that is something that definitely needs to be talked about. They pressured Tua on 14 of 40 dropbacks in this game, good for 35%. In the previous three weeks, Tua was pressured on a le- on a league low 21 percent of his dropbacks the buffalo bills recorded four sacks and nine quarterback hits miami entered the game only having surrendered one sack and mm-hmm. five hits in the previous three games total now the caveat to that and dolphins fans will point this out and i will agree with them they didn't have any connor williams liam eichenberg started at center he looked awful and teron armstead left late into the second quarter and kendall lamb came in for him so the Buffalo Bills took advantage of that, and they did something that no other defensive line has done previous to this, and that is get to Tua. They get to Tua, and as Eric and others have pointed out, I think Joe Marino mm-hmm. pointed this out as well, is like making him go to his second second option, right? Giving that line just that split second, second or two more to get in there, I mean, made all the difference, right? And, and taking away that first read, you're not going to do it every single time, but doing it more... Mm-hmm more so than he has been um you know he's been forced to in prior games really gave that bills defensive line a chance and then we saw some very interesting things with rousseau playing inside which we would all been kind Mm -hmm. of like hoping that would happen at some point getting a sack on one of those alignments um i mean the bills defensive line just absolutely dominated and also by the way in a couple of those Mm -hmm. plays you see even ed oliver reacting so quickly that he knew he wasn't going to get to two ends on some of these plays backing out a bit and getting his hands up and batting balls down. And so that part of that as well is Mm -hmm. just like not necessarily um, running blindly into the backfield, but really understanding like, am I going to get there or not? And if I'm not getting my hands up and we saw AJ Vanessa knock the ball down out at Oliver, knock the ball down, plenty of, plenty of that happening as Mm -hmm. well. So not just the sacks, but also the batted balls. Yeah, I mean, we we literally talked about this at length on the pregame show. Whatever you, as the Buffalo Bills, as a unit, Sean McDermott, whatever you got to do to get Tua off script, to get him to his second read, to get him to his third read, you got to do it. And they were effective. Simulated pressures. They were communicating on the back end. They really did a great job of forcing Tua to hold on to the ball. A stat that was shared by Joe Marino via Fantasy Points. Tua threw to his first read on 80% of his passes in weeks one through three. He was only able to get to his first read 57% of the time against go. the Buffalo Bills. So the Buffalo Bills did their job there. They have so far this season generated pressure on 46% of their snaps. That's second in the NFL. They have a 12% sack rate that is first in the NFL. They've blitzed on only 16% of the plays this year, second lowest in the NFL. But as people like Greg Tomset point out, this is Sean McDermott simulating pressures. Just because they're only rushing four guys doesn't mean that they're necessarily not blitzing because you know four guys are coming from the Buffalo Bills, but Sean McDermott is doing a great job of never letting you know what four guys are coming. And it has ended up in great results for the Buffalo Bills this year. They have the best defense, defensive line in football right now. Yeah, and they don't even have Von Miller back yet. So that's <laughs> that, that's that's the scariest yeah. thing about it. Mm-hmm. Just waves of guys, good good um uh you know, obviously uh documentation of the the rotation and the snap count percentages, like just waves of guys coming in. Um this I think is what probably Sean McDermott envisioned in Sh- Brandon Bean envisioned with Sean McDermott sort of um stamp on like what he wanted to do with this defensive line in past years and doing this rotation and having these waves, Mm -hmm. but they never really quite got the personnel right. Right. It was either like forward Carolina guys like Mario Addison, or it was guys like Quentin Jefferson who maybe weren't like a fit or got, had to play out of position because of injuries to other guys or star Mm Latulale who they envision as like the kind of one tech that really Daquan Jones has just absolutely blown out of the water compared to what to what's so they got the personnel right right Mm -hmm. and so that in combination with mcdermott calling the defense i think that's where you see this could really be the best defensive line in the nfl speaking of the best defensive line in the nfl let's talk about and let's give out some individual accolades daquan jones leads the nfl in pass rush 
productivity rate. He has been <laughs> insane through the first four weeks of the season. And, and I mentioned this on previous podcasts, like n- not even looking at the data, just the eye test. When you're watching the game broadcast, he just in the backfield so darn quick. And you notice it so darn much two and a half sacks through four games. It's official. We are reigniting a movement that we, we did not start this movement. We've always been supporters of this movement. We didn't start it. Extend Daquan Jones. This movement needs to be reignited. This guy needs a new contract before the season's over. Yep. To give him the same two year deal he got, maybe even give him a few more bucks, right? Like, I don't care. Give him, Mm -hmm. give him two for 15 at this point. Like I I want him back. Um, It's very evident that the money that the bills thought they were investing in the return that they, they were hoping they would get with star didn't, pan out but you could see what their intention was with it right Mm -hmm. and that intention has now transpired into daquan jones right and like he's the guy that clearly fits and is clearly at another level above of what star star was right and so Mm -hmm. this being as important as it is to whether it was frazier but obviously mcdermott's defense it's still hugely important you need to get this guy back in the mix for the next couple years Ed Oliver, 71% snap share on Sunday. He is sixth in the NFL this year in pass rush productivity rate, three sacks through four games. Again, whether it's pass rush or it's run defense, he is making game-changing plays. He is just noticeably different than the other defenders, or not the other defenders, just the players on the field. He is having... And an all pro season and completely outplaying that contract. Oh yeah. I mean, he's outplaying it and whether whatever you want to say, right? Like mm-hmm. he got his money, but usually what will happen, you know, I and I it's not every case, but like in most cases, the story ends up being, oh, the guy didn't play up to his contract, right? That he got, right? They paid for his potential or his past performance and it didn't didn't pan out. Mm-hmm. He is playing above what the bills paid for. The Bills took a chance on signing him, right? Because he hadn't shown this level of consistency in the past. He had shown flashes and he had very dominant moments, but he has been dominant throughout four games so far this year. And like, yeah. I don't see any reason why we would think that wouldn't continue at this point. Like he has been consistent this year in four games is a pretty good sample size. I guess some, you know, I get it. There's been some subpar lines he's gone against, but like, You've mm-hmm. got to dominate subpar competition if you're an above average to elite player, and he's done that. So in my mind, kudos to Oliver. Plus, he's just, to me, like I said, it was never about anything of him off the field or as a person. He's a likable guy, in my opinion, mm-hmm. and so easy to root for. I'm, I'm happy for him. Jordan Phillips having a great year. Tim Settle making plays. Shaq Lawson making plays. AJ Vanessa, Kingsley Jonathan all flashing as well. But how about another guy who is going to get paid soon? And that is first round pick, former first round pick, Gregory Rousseau, 25th Mm. in the NFL in pass rush productivity from the edge this season. Three sacks through four games. He's on the precipice, it seems, of joining the NFL's upper echelon edge rushers. He's never going to be up there with, with the Miles Garrett's or the Boses of the world. I can envision him in the next over the course of the next calendar year entering the top like eight to 15 conversation of edge rushers in the National Football League. He just looks like he's about to enter a different level out there. Yeah, he kind of like, I don't know, he kind of like fits maybe into like the Cam Hayward or Cam Jordan, like like that Mm -hmm. type of like realm of defensive end. Like he's not going to be the guy that gets 20 sacks, right? But like, no. He is going to be the guy, like you said at the beginning of the season, that can get you 10, 12 sacks, contribute immensely in the run game, bat down balls, like line them up inside, line them up outside. Like he's going to get paid. Um, I mean, at this rate, I don't know what the market value really should be for him, but he is going to cash in. And like, Mm -hmm. I think the bills really need to make him part of the future because as we've, as we know, not a lot under contract beyond Von Miller <laughs> uh, on this mm-hmm. defensive line um, beyond 2023. And 
this is a guy that is a core to you. You, you, he's a first round pick. Um, he's playing, he, he's playing incredibly well and you need to make him part of your future. I mean, he's been a huge part of the success of this team. Yeah. And, and who knows, like, again, I don't want to take credit away from Gregory Rousseau because he's the one out there doing it, but I wonder if he would be where he's at right now, if it wasn't for a mentor like Von Miller coming in here and, and showing him the ropes and showing him what it means to be an NFL football player. So on top of Von Miller being a productive pass rusher for you, and he's coming back later on this season, he might've been the guy that really helps turn Groot from that ball of clay into a finally, finely tuned football player. So it's going to be really interesting to see how he progresses over the course of the next couple of years. Because like I said, I, I think he's just scratching the surface. A guy who's already scratched the surface, a guy who is playing bonkers right now. He is completely outplaying the contract. He's making NFL teams who didn't sign him at the beginning of free agency look just silly. The guy that you mentioned as one of your top 10 bills this season in order for us to be successful, that's Leonard Floyd. Seventh in the NFL in pass rush productivity, three and a half sacks through four, four games. He, Rousseau, and Von Miller, when he returns, just going to be an absolutely scary trio. The possibilities for these three are going to be endless. And playing through an ankle injury, Leonard Floyd is still showing up and showing out every single week. Yeah, I'm going to like bump that same tweet every week that says, I think he's going to be looked <laughs> back as one of the best signings of the offseason. I'll just keep saying it because like he has been such a a nice addition, right? And I just feel like, Again, it kind of goes with the same theme of the overall defensive line. They got the personnel right. You th- you look at the money they put into the, the defensive line and the way things have kind of staggered out. Like, you've got the big money right now and it, with Oliver and, and Von Miller, but, like, Rousseau's on a rookie deal, Floyd here on a one-year contract, Daquan mm-hmm. on an expiring contract, obviously. But you have other guys that are coming back, like, one-year deal, like, the mix that they have in the investment that they have right now is really nice. Um, I would make Leonard Floyd a part of future plans as well. Like not mm-hmm. necessarily like going to be like a huge multi-year deal, like, um, like Rousseau, but like, I feel like another one or two year deal for Leonard Floyd should be in the cards or at least to be in consideration. Mm-hmm. The bills really need to figure out what they're going to do on the defensive line investment wise. Like I said, beyond 2023. So It'll be really interesting to see if Floyd is part of those plans. But one thing's for sure, he's going to be playing motivated the rest of the year because he's going to want to get that bag next year. So Mm -hmm. let him keep it up. And and man, when Vaughn comes back, that's going to be really fun.